Hi everybody! Today we're going to be working in this colouring book and if anybody watched my mermaids video this is the one that actually arrived during my five minute mermaid challenge. I've been really wanting this book for ages I ended up having to buy it off Etsy so it did take quite a while to come and it was pretty expensive but yeah it's really worth it. I do love the pictures in this book and I wanted to work in this one today. This is called World Fairy Tales or something along those lines that the title is here I would imagine or here again I don't speak the language Japanese uh, I don't speak it so if anyone can correct me on that uh, but as far as I can tell it is called World Fairy Tales and it is by Doming or Doming that's the artist that did it and uh, I've been wanting to colour in this one because I've like I said I've been wanting it for ages and it's only just arrived seeing so, you know, it's like new toys must use them so yeah I want to colour in this one and originally what I was going to do is pick these colours because I thought that this colour palette, these 12 colours here, were what was used on every picture throughout the book. But looking at it, no, there is slight differences between each picture. So I don't really have that much time to colour today. So instead of looking at the picture and picking out 12 colours that I thought were in the picture, what I thought I would do is just grab one of my 12 pencil sets. I've got this one. This is Derwent Colour Soft. And I thought I'd try and colour a picture just with those, using those 12 colours. And uh, these are the colours we have here. Okay, there is black, C650, indigo, C300, green, C420, lime green, C460, blue, C330, dark brown, C520, dark terracotta, C610, Deep Fuchsia, C140, Red, C120, Bright Orange, C080, Deep Cadmium, C040, and White, that's C720. I've swatched all the colours and they are fairly bright, so it'll be interesting to see what, what we can actually get done with that today. So here we go, I'll zoom us in and we'll have a look, see what we can get started. Okay, so this is the picture we're going to be working on today. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, I think that's in German, but in English it is The Musicians of Bremen. It's um, a German, I think, fairy tale about these four kind of farmyard animals who leave their homes because they're getting old and being mistreated. They go out and they decide they're going to be musicians in Bremen, but along the way they meet this gang of robbers, they end up tricking them, taking over their house and just living their life in the little house in the countryside, so it's quite a nice story I would imagine. Um, I've never actually heard of it before. I had to look it up in the synopsis and stuff. But but anyway, yeah, this, that's the story. And this is the picture we're going to be colouring in. And we're going to be using these 12 pencils. I have started down in the corner there. Um, I did have to do a little bit of erasing. I was using the colours too, too heavy down in this corner because this is the background and I do want it to be fairly light. So I was using the colours a bit too heavy handed. They are more pigmented than the pencils I usually use so yeah I'm going to have to bear that in mind. But for the main body of the picture I'm going to want the colours to be pretty bright anyway. It's just this background that needs to be a bit more muted. So I've done that earlier on just to test out the pencils on the paper mainly because there is no test page. Um, there's a couple of pages towards the front I could have used but they're not this kind of creamy coloured paper so I'm guessing it's not the same paper so it wouldn't really have helped. Uh, I have used the the white gel pen as per usual and a little bit of the silver sharpie just for these kind of rivets around the edge of the frame because I think just leaving them white might have looked or, or cream in this case rather would have, might have looked a bit odd so I've brought in the silver sharpie for maybe this background behind the music note and for these little rivets and I did bring my gold sharpie as well I'm not sure if I'll actually use that one but I've brought it over the silver did did kind of go through very slightly but on on the back of the page there's an illustration anyways um, you always get an illustration and then a line drawing of the picture that you can colour in yourself so going through onto the illustration page shouldn't be so much of a problem I wouldn't imagine but yeah and let's get going I'm not sure whether I'll leave this as a full kind of real-time colour along or turn it into a speed colour or a little bit of both I really I really don't know at the moment um, I didn't really have time to make a lot of plans for today that's why we've got something fairly simple where I didn't have to sort out any colours or do a lot of background work where shall we start? I think it's customary to start 
in this top corner and I think these clouds may even be the blues and a little bit of yellow it's going to be quite interesting trying to figure out how to work these colours into that picture I think I might have to make a few compromises in a couple of places because they don't match exactly the colours that have been used but just for quickness I thought sometimes it's quite relaxing just to pick up one of the 12 sets or something the, not have to worry about any colour palettes just go for it and especially when it's a book like this it's kind of a bit intimidating I have to say it's a bit intimidating for me this book because it did cost quite a lot it's the first time I've ever bought a book off of Etsy and yeah I, I do love the pictures so it's been a bit intimidating I've been wanting to start it but yeah I find the best way when a, a book is kind of intimidating is to uh, just jump in really pick a page that you like just jump right in and I chose one the only one in the whole book with a moon <laughs> so that's what I chose as my theme this month is moon the moon so this is the one I chose not a story I'm completely familiar with I'd have to say I, I did look it as I said and that's the only reason I do know what it's about. Good old Wikipedia. And that cloud. I'm trying to stick pretty much to what is on the other side of the page. But as I said, there will be a bit of compromising because the colours are not exactly what have been used over there and not what I would normally pick. And yeah, these pencils do seem to work quite well on this paper. You can layer with them. Remember that they are really pigmented pencils. So the colours were coming out quite bright down in the bottom. The colours did come out a bit too bright actually, especially when I went over the top with um, with the white and burnished it. It did turn out a little bit too bright down the bottom. So yeah, the clouds I'm um, just I've been using the the indigo, the blue, the deep cadmium because as I said there's not much choice here and I just kind of burnished it a little bit with the white there and it does make this, especially this indigo blue, a lot brighter when you do burnish it I was trying to shade a tiny bit with the black down the bottom as well just to see how that would turn out I don't usually like to use tons of black to shade but when you're dealing with this this few colours there's not much choice again because the moon is like the moon is yellow in between all these clouds here so a lot of these clouds will be the actual yellow um, deep cadmium oh excuse the noisy neighbours again I guess <laughs> it's always when I'm filming this time it's the neighbours at the back they seem to be getting a delivery or something Okay, so yeah, please excuse any background noise. It's bringing the dark blue behind this, behind this star, hopefully to make that stand out a little bit if I do that with the yellow and the orange that should hopefully make that stand out I'm trying, going to try not to use the gel pen so much because I'm trying to make it into a sort of little challenge to myself like I do when I use these 12 when I use a, a set of 12 pencils I try and make a challenge to myself like what can I do with just those colours and nothing else I have used the silver sharpie but yeah I'm making a little bit of an allowance for that and in some places I probably will end up using the the white gel pen that's just I just can't colour without one these days it seems <laughs> okay going on to the blue now and yeah not sticking completely to how the illustration is on the other side Just aiming to make a nice picture. 
try and use all the colours the best ways I can. But again, using it as inspiration to keep somewhat similar at least. It's a bit of an experiment really. I've, I've only used these pencils one time before and that was for kind of like a portrait kind of page in Colouring Heaven magazine and of course the paper is entirely different and I could not get these pencils to work very well on that paper to be honest but these this paper seems to be working quite well they're really soft pencils and as I've said they're really pigmented I'm gonna bring the white in now and they're pretty thick as well pretty chunky so if you have a sharpener with two holes these ones need to be sharpened in the big hole of the sharpener okay just blend these clouds a little bit i do like to blend with white but yeah, you don't have to. Some people don't like to because it does dull the colours down in lots of cases, make them um, paler, sometimes brighter, like with that indigo colour. See, if you go over that indigo colour, that does pale it down and make it a lot brighter. Which is what happened when I tried down the bottom here and the colours were really vibrant, which, which isn't what I'm going to be going for. I want it to be fairly pale down the bottom there because that's background and we want that to be not quite so noticeable okay add some shadows back in because that white has well it's dulled down our indigo so we'll just add that back in might need some of the white gel pen around the edges of these clouds although they're not really emphasized too much in the in the original art over here they're not really emphasized that super much maybe i'll leave it see at the end i don't want to add any any highlights it might actually be enough i'm just too used to coloring with a white gel pen now i think <laughs> i'll use it everywhere Shading behind that star. I might go over that yellow tag with the cadmium. I'm hoping that even if I do forget to mention which pencil I can pick up, you can actually see because um, there's not really that many colours to be choosing from. So hopefully, it should be fairly obvious which ones I'm using. And while well, I've got the yellow, this. The star is yellow. I should really complete all the clouds first, but I do like to jump around when I'm colouring. If you've watched any of my other kind of colour alongs or anything like that, you will have noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't stick to one area for very long. Um, let's go in with the bright orange too the star a little bit. Let me try and keep it a bit sketchy because yeah this whole book is pretty sketchy actually. And the illustration's got some like circle. Got the texture going on there. It'd be fun to try and copy that. Yeah that looks pretty cool. Don't bring that yellow out anymore. Yeah, I can make that a little bit brighter. There we are. And the moon. The moon is the yellow as well. Unfortunately, we don't really have a purple. We do have a pink. So I might have to bring the pink into that to the door. 
sure how much that would stand out against the yellow moon, but we're going to bring it in and see anyway. <laughs> Just going to fill this moon in with the yellow. I'm not trying to be super smooth here because I'll probably go on top and blend with the white anyway. So just to get a layer of colour down. And hopefully once I've actually finished colouring this one, I won't be so intimidated by the book anymore. <laughs> there are a few pictures in here that I really, really want to do. But I wanted to pick one. No, thankfully, this one had a moon in it. I wanted to pick pictures that I wasn't really super invested in. Uh, in case I did mess up. Okay, bring in the orange in now. Seems to be on the edges of that star. Like that, and then our moon has got, oh, it's got some light shading down here, and then some more obvious craters towards the top. So we just get some more light pressure down the bottom. It's it's kind of difficult when you when you do have such a limited selection of colors. You have to make your instead of having colors be the main point. You want to use differences in pressure to get the shade. You can't have like four or five different shades of blue if you've only got two in the box. So you have to use different shades of pressure to try and make differences between your shades of colour. Right there we've added some light, very light pressure with this with the bright orange, not cadmium, the yellow is the cadmium, some bright orange all the lighter shading on that moon. I'm trying to make little circles with it because the moon is all cratery anyway and pressing a bit harder now for the for the bigger bits of shade for these craters on the moon. Doesn't have to be exactly the same as the as the illustration. It's just a suggestion more than anything. It doesn't have to be totally accurate. Your your brain will tell you that this is the moon when it sees some kind of craters. Although if I was colouring the moon really, I would make it more silver rather than yellow. But... but keeping in with the colour palette we are we are making a yellow moon. Although it would be quite nice to have the yellow light kind of reflecting off of stuff. At least in this main body of the picture. Okay, shall we see what that looks like when we blend it with the white? Clean off the white because we don't need any blue in our moon. I like knocking the orange back as well so it's not too bright, which is good. Is it even more of a more of terracotta y colour over there, so we don't want it super bright orange. I like it around that start of being really bright orange, so I might leave that there <laughs> without really blending it. Let's see how we make out. Yeah, I'm blending the white on top of this very really light pressure orange that we did down here. That's, that's looking quite good to me. Kind of a subtle difference to show the surface texture of the moon, but not so in your face. And a nice little circle kind of dots those will. We'll have that orange outline as well. 
with the bright orange. The lines are not super black, the lines are more kind of grey, so going around over the lines of that colour is standing out rather well, I think. Okay, that's nice. And while we're with the yellow and orange, this frame around the outside, I've done it down here, that's mainly facing with the yellow. I think it might be gold really so if I was if I did have my freedom of colors I would do this gold most likely with the sharpie or the gel pen or gold paint something along those lines but as it is use the yellow and I think I shaded with the orange and the dark terracotta I think I shaded down the bottom just to try and give a more golden Let's try doing the outline for that kind of screw fixture in the middle there. Let the yellow shake out a little bit. I did use a white gel pen to outline this one, I think, down the bottom when I was trying out earlier. So this is a dark terracotta. Bring that in just for the shape. Not too bad, and the frame, the frame is with the red, so the inside of the frame here is red, so that's behind here. The red is not a particularly dark red, so I was shading it with, with black and with the dark brown. Let's see how we look. So yeah, that, that's just the red. With kind of a quite hard pressure on there so because it's behind our moon and the stars and the clouds I'm going to shift that with the dark brown go for a bit of shading maybe bring in the black a tiny bit I don't want to go super super heavy with the black as I've said, it can be really harsh when you're using it for shading and we don't really want super harsh. A bit of shading in those corners. Okay, not too bad. And, and down the bottom here I did put a white outline around the edges just, just to differentiate it. supposed to be gold under there. <laughs> um, well that's actually part of the clouds. So I'll fix that when I go over it. Okay we've got another star so we're doing those yellow cadmium. And adding that orange too. Oh, this one actually has the circles drawn onto it so we can just Use those. To give a little bit of texture in the middle of the star. That one actually has a blue outline looking at the illustration there, so we'll try, try anything. We'll add a little bit of blue to the to the outline. Might be a bit much, but we'll see when the how the thing, the whole thing starts to come together eventually. I hope. Alright, so. I'm probably doing this in a different order as I used, did the pencils um, last time, but yeah, I do do things kind of randomly. Usually, if I'm colouring, I'm pretty much switched off, to be honest. And, um, yeah, I don't pay super much attention to doing things exactly to plan. I just go with the flow usually. And as I've said today, I didn't have a lot of time to plan anyways because 
Tuesday I did my finished pictures video and Wednesday I was in work so today is Thursday um, usually when I come back from work I'm really tired so I don't get any colouring done when I'm that tired so there wasn't much planning that went on yesterday that's why we're we're just doing as I feel today just filming my colouring session <laughs> This is probably what I would have done, even if I wasn't filming, this is probably what I would be doing because, yeah, I really wanted to kind of break into this book and make it not so scary anymore. Because I really do want to colour in this one, it's kind of like the, the crowning jewel of my collection at the moment. It's the most I've ever paid for a colouring book and, yeah, it, the pictures are super nice, the paper's nice, it's just nice in general. It's one of those that you're like, do I, do I want to just leave it as an art book? Do I want to try and colour in it? But yeah, of course, I, I bought it to colour in, so I don't really want to just leave it on the bookshelf. That would be kind of sad, really, and defeating the point. So we're going to try, and this is going to be the first one that I've done. It seems to be working okay so far. I, I have hope so far that it's going to work. Um, so some yellow, some yellow light to these clouds, and then go in with the light blue. Completely reverse order to what I probably should be doing it. But to be honest, I don't think it matters super much. If I was doing like a serious kind of portrait or something, I would try and keep to the right order. I'm going to bring in the light blue. Again, not not religiously following the the illustration. Going with what I think would be a good good use of colour. I don't tend to completely follow illustrations if, if there is a picture for you to copy I suppose it kind of depends what mood I'm in sometimes I might try and copy it but usually if I try to copy someone else exactly it never works for me <laughs> so I like to like deviate at least in a few points if I'm if I'm using another picture as reference I just use it more as inspiration rather than full-on reference most of the time. Okay, let's try. I'll just clean off the white. Yeah, these pencils are really, really soft, so they do seem to be wearing down quite fast. Luckily, I did bring over my sharpener. Because I'm working on the table at the moment, the, the dining table. Because everyone is out at the moment, so I'm getting, I've got the house to myself for a couple of hours. <laughs> which is lovely. It is half term week here in the UK so otherwise it would have been quite difficult to find some time to film. As I do, like I said, take over the, the table in the front room. <laughs> if anybody else is wanting the table for any of their hobbies or if anybody wants to watch TV they can't really because that would be too much background noise. So having the house to myself, yeah, perfect. That little kind of puff of color there is just the dark blue. Okay. There we go. That's looking good, I think. Okay, let's see here. We do have more kind of light blue. It's coming in because this is the, the music coming out of the trumpet. I think this is supposed to supposed to represent. So we have a lot of the light blue here. And yellow. 
looks like there might be a tiny bit of green. I don't know if that's just the yellow mixing with the blue. Let's purposely make some green. There we go. Just putting yellow over the top of that light blue. It's giving us a bit of a green colour there. It looks like that's what's happened over the other side. They've just used the yellow over the top of the blue. And gotten the green colour. But that looks... That is probably a tad too yellow. That looks as if it is representing the music coming out of the, of the trumpet. Okay, there we go. This shall we bring in a little bit of the orange with that, I think. It's looking okay. We'll add, there's quite a lot of yellow. In the illustration, there's quite a lot of yellow on this one. One goes lines. And blue. Dark blue indigo, I think it's called. Yeah, indigo. So mainly the yellow and the indigo as clouds. So I might add a little bit of the light blue towards the moon. Because the contrast between the blue and the kind of orange up there is nice. <laughs> so I'll bring in the light blue. Okay, so as you know that the blue and the orange they are opposites on the colour wheel, so yeah, we haven't got a bit of contrast there. Which is nice. Hopefully it shouldn't distract from the main from the main image, which will be the animals. And I'm guessing the musical instruments. Okay, we might bring in the jump in there, I think I'm the edges of these clouds. Anyway, we have a bit of white on them. A bit of light coming from that moon. Let's bring the eye on as well. Okay, put those clouds nicely in front of the moon. And we're going for the dark blue behind here. I'm going to shade that the back as well, just to give a nice night sky, a deep night sky colour. If I go over that with the white, that will soften that down some. There we go. It does make it a lot smoother, but it does pale it out and brighten it quite a lot. Which is what I want up here, because those clouds are supposed to be quite separate. And the yellow. On the edge there, I think. And on the star. Which will have its orange outline. It should bring that out nicely. Circle designs in the middle. Oh, 
I really should not be using the gel pen. <laughs> I tell myself I wouldn't. But that needed it, I think. Just to separate out that kind of swoosh where the music is coming in. Okay, stars again with yellow. And the orange, bright orange. So an orange outline. Be hard to see, but they will bring it out from that blue, so I'll add it in. There we go. And add in that little bit of texture in the middle with the circles. Awesome. Right, so we're back to clouds. With the yellow around the edge. Around the edge of the swirl. We have the story here, which And some more of the indigo for these the wisps. I presume they're wisps of clouds, but of course you can make them anything you want them to be. Let's, oh, missed a little bit of yellow there. Let's bring in the shade in the star. Looking at those clouds now, there seems to be an orange, an orange outline around these edges of the clouds. Let me add that in. Just as an experiment. I like that. Yeah, I do like that. Just using this illustration as an example. Yeah, it looks like the moon might have it too. Let's, let's dive in. A little bit around the edges of the moon. Oh, that works quite well. Yeah, these colours are working out a lot brighter. In the actual illustration, I think. But I think as long as we keep the bright colours towards the main kind of part in the middle here, especially inside the the door, is it a door or a window? Inside this wooden frame, anyway, in the middle there. Then we should be good. That way, the the main picture will get the attention. Because bright colours do draw in, draw your eye, especially when there's contrast. Bright colours and quite a lot of contrast do are what draw your eye, and they're things that bring things. Anything you colour with lots of contrast, like between you know, dark and light, or between opposite colours on the colour wheel, will draw attention and bring things forward. It's kind of a way you add depth sometimes. If you want to push things back, you, you make sure there's not a lot of difference between the colours. And it's quite pale. Anything further back will be pale, which is why I made this background here. Um, I made that a lot paler than what it was when I first did it. Because I want that to be pushed back. It's not something we're going to be noticing first. So... And it kind of is here, they're all kind of muted colours with not much difference between them. So yeah, you, you don't really notice the kind of background, the houses in the background at the bottom there. Which is the way it's meant to be. What do we have here? It's kind of a streamer. Oh, it's kind 
have a turquoise green colour. I'm not sure I'll be able to make that, but I will try. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while since I tried to colour something with just a, a 12 set of pencils, but I do find it quite relaxing because there isn't that much choice when it comes to colours, so there's no hard thinking about colour, palettes, planning things out. It does make things a lot easier when there isn't a lot of choice I've found. So I find it relaxing. Some people might not. Some people might find it hard. Easier just to use the full set. But sometimes, especially if, when I'm watching TV on the sofa or something, I just want to pick up a, a little set of pencils and just to put the colour on the paper, see what we can come up with. Which is kind of what we're doing here. Just seeing what we can do. Using the illustration as a bit of a of an inspiration the lines here are actually yellow or oh, more of an orangey yellow actually but I can I can go on that go on top of that once we've once we've done sorry I'm tailing off I'm totally still not used to talking my way through these these videos. I think I'm getting better. I'm getting a lot better, I think. But I'm um, getting a lot more comfortable with being, you know, filming myself while I'm working, which is a good start. Let's make that into a more orangey yellow. Yeah, you can definitely see the difference with my, my earlier videos and my later videos, which, yeah, it's a good thing. I mean, nobody's going to be perfect at it when they first start, are they? And obviously, yeah, I was not. I will freely admit that. But I am improving and I'm getting better at just general talking, I think. I think I'm still quite a way off doing a proper colour and chat. I've tried watching other people and I'm just amazed. <laughs> I can just flow with it. Yeah, the stuff they talk about just flows. I don't think I'll ever be like that. I'll always have bits where I tail off and <laughs> don't really have much to talk about. My life is not that interesting. And I do, as I've said, tend to switch off while I'm colouring and not, not really pay attention to much else, to be honest with you. Sure, if that blue is quite different enough, might have to get that one or two. That was the lighter blue, and then put the dark on top, but I don't want it to be too dark. It's only slightly different in the illustration, it's more of a greyish blue, but I don't really want to put any black on it. I might. Slightly different to the, the plain, just the plain blue, but not quite as dark as the indigo, so that will do. Okay, it does it does stretch you a little bit when you only have a 12 tin of colours to be using. You need to play with them to try and get all the different shades. Try mixing them, layering them on top of each other and stuff. Sometimes it does help come up with some nice colour combinations. Because you have to be a bit more creative. You're kind of forcing your own hand, really. Which sometimes is good. It's like going out of your comfort zone. It, it really does stretch you. Like This is this not the kind of thing that I would usually colour. I love the illustrations not the kind of thing I would usually colour because I love to colour portraits mainly colour portraits of like the pretty ladies lots of hair <laughs> that's what I love to colour but yeah you've got to get out of your comfort zone sometimes 
and it does teach you quite a lot even if it's just making yourself a bit more comfortable with other things and helps you figure out what kind of things you do like to like to colour because we can't like colouring everything no, there's pictures that I love that I know I just will not be able to colour because there's certain things that I can't colour without getting bored or losing interest halfway through like trees mainly oh, trees, I, I can't colour trees to save my life I do not like colouring trees and flowers I'm not super good at I like colouring them I love trying to figure out colour combinations that work, might work but yeah I'm not super much of a flower colourist again I just get bored <laughs> especially if there's lots and lots of flowers it's it's not interesting to me at all to be honest I, I know lots of people do love to colour flowers more power to you because I can't um, especially not trees and then again there's certain things that I love to colour like mushrooms or rocks or especially people I love to colour people but yeah other things just no let's see what colour I've got here I'll get a bit of a blue outline it's going quite well so far It'll probably go through a stage where I'm really not not sure I even like it. I think most pictures do. They go through an ugly stage or a stage where you look at it and you think, yeah, that's not very good at all. But usually if you push through, I think, you push through, carry on with it, figure things out, and yeah, it usually turns out for the best. It, it does take quite a lot these days, I think, for me to just totally abandon something. I do have a few kind of whips that I have pretty much abandoned but those are from way back in the day when I first started colouring when I was plugging away with my gel pens and my fine liners and not really knowing what I was doing super much I, I hadn't figured out the things that I do like to colour in the things that I don't so yeah way back in the day with some books I have basically written off some of the really really old whips that I had going on but these days yeah basically takes quite a lot for me to completely abandon the picture okay once again as I'm settling down for my filming <laughs> parcels come to be delivered not mine this time no books to get excited about it's just some uh, parcel for the other half but yeah, it does seem to be it does seem to be something that happens at the moment every time I settle down, get a bit of filming done and the doorbell goes. But never mind. Now where was I? I was talking about yeah, the whip that I thought I abandoned a while ago. Yeah, that one was a total disaster. It was from Coing Heaven and I can't remember the artist's name off the top of my head at the moment. I'm having a real brain blank on that one yeah i tried to do it as a limited palette challenge with like i think it was a four or five color challenge with being allowed to use skin tones for markers with being allowed to use skin tones rather i used a marker um and yeah it it went terribly badly i think i tried doing the skin tone and shading it with the with the pencils the colours that we were allowed to use and it just wasn't working with trying to shade a skin tone with those colours it was a bad idea from the start but that's my uh, yeah that was my bad decision I think rather than being the artist whose name I still can't remember but yeah it didn't work and I tried it just didn't work and I just left it in the end and I think it was a whip for at least a couple of years whereas I had completely thrown in the towel but then all of a sudden I was inspired inspired to finish it I think after filming a video of of my colouring heaven magazines I think 
because it was in a coloring having magazine so yeah instead of um leaving it there to while away its time as a whip i did finish it in the end um i think in the end i, I abandoned the idea of it being a four or five color challenge because oops i should have done the, the light blue there first because yeah it just wasn't working so i just tackled it the way i would tackle any normal coloring and uh, abandoned the idea of keeping it to like four or five colors and it ended up working in the end so even that that kind of spurs me on these days if i can finish that picture that i had just given up on and thought that i was never going to get back to at all ever i can finish it and admittedly it's even when finished it's not my bestest work <laughs> because it was still a struggle but I tried, I did try, and I still can't remember her name. Um, you guys probably know who she is. She does books with uh, fairy tales, like she has one on Peter Pan, one on Beauty and the Beast, one on, um, and things like that. Oh, well, she's got, I think, she, does she have a nice in Wonderland? I think she does. I can't remember, as I said, I don't know. I don't really follow her. A lot of people love her, but I tried to get into it and I just couldn't. I'm not sure whether she's fairly stylized and fairly simple her work is. It's, yeah, the pictures are lovely. I can see why people do love it, but I couldn't get into it. I was pleased to get that one picture actually finished. This one in the original illustration has actually gone out of the lines. Watercolour that's kind of gone out of the lines, and there is some little stars. They're yellow stars, but let's see. Some little kind of my time stars going on there. I'll add those in. There we go. Just for fun to play about. There we go. Okay, what kind of I think that seems to be a kind of bluey green. Let's see if we can do it by putting the blue on first, and then the green. Is that anything similar? <laughs> it's not showing up super well. It's not such. It's a pretty different colour. Looking at it there, but it has got quite a dark outline. The line art here is is pretty pale. It just it's kind of like pencil, pencil drawings, and maybe if I go around this and give it a bit more of an outline. There we go, that's slightly better. Not brilliant. <laughs> it's slightly better. Okay, drumsticks, I think we'll I seem to have the dark terracotta as a bit of a base. Maybe shade that with the darker brown. Do a bit of white blending. Yeah, it's a dark terracotta. We do have a dark brown as well. It seems to be around the handles. The outline it got to go from the dark outline. There we go, it's adding some of the dark brown, just clean off the white and blend that through, see what that ends up at. Be a bit too pale. 
we do have a base now so we can go over the top back in with the terracotta Side edge of the frame, which we're doing with the yellow. I think I tried to put in those little kind of lines we've got going on the edge of the frame. I tried to put those in a little bit with the orange, dark orange, I think it's called. Bright orange. Hope you know which ones I mean when I say, you know, orange, yellow. <laughs> Yeah, I do have a list of the colours. I can, I can pop those down in the description anyway. They're the colours that come in the twelve set, which uh, yeah, I bought from the range while I was on holiday. Well, technically, my mum bought it for me while I was in the range on a holiday last year. I got, um, she got me those, the little twelve set, and the oh, that's the one crown, and the tin. Of chromophore pencils, a set twelve ten of chromophore pencils, and those I haven't been able to get along with very well so far. Probably needs another test because I was working in coloring heaven again with those. That was what I had with me at the time because I was on holiday. I was working coloring heaven with those, and yeah, I couldn't get along with them. I need to try them on maybe paper like this or something to see how I can get along with them. But I just couldn't get them to blend or anything. It does take time. Getting new supplies always takes time to figure out how to use them. Just trying to make this uh, frame with the orange and the dark brown there. And the dark terracotta. Trying to make it something like what's on the illustration. <laughs> something like, not perfectly the same. Okay, shall we bring in the edge of this frame? I was giving it a yellow edging. It doesn't have one in the in the actual illustration, but I was giving it the yellow along the edge. Just because if this moon is shining on it, then yeah, the edge would be yellow. And plus, it's a little bit of contrast to make it not so make it a bit more interesting to color, shall we say? So here's the red. Which isn't a particularly strong red, I don't think, unless you press. Yeah, it's more of a. I don't know, pinky red, I think. But maybe we can make it work for our, for our purposes. Let's add in a little bit of the, the dark brown, this one. Yeah, that has a little bit of a, a shape in the lines as well. In the darker bits, going behind those clouds. Does that work? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, or just a bit of an experiment. 
I've only coloured one of other picture with these. And it wasn't as complicated. It was a portrait of a lady, I think. And I did struggle with that one, to be honest. With the blending. But I think what I did was put too many layers and the paper just couldn't handle it. These are not especially colours that you would think of to do skin with anyways, I think. <laughs> Which is kind of why I struggled doing a portrait with these colours. But I wanted to test them. I didn't have that many books with me. And that's what I ended up trying to do. Again, I ended up sort of salvaging it in the end with a bit of creative... Um, Creative license. We sorted it in the end. But yeah, as I've said, these colours, so you can't really do skin with them unless you're super skilled. I don't know, there might be people more skillful than me who say, oh, I do skin tones with that set all the time. <laughs> and if there are, please, please show me how. <laughs> I struggled, I really struggled. But at the moment I'm just playing. I suppose this could be a good way to get to to get to know the pencils and figure out how to use them. I'm just shading this red with the terracotta. It does have some pretty dark shading in the corners. And add to these kind of Lines. The same within the yellow around the edge, it has the lines. I'm not quite happy with how those are doing there. I might have to bring in the black, bring in the big guns, bring in the black. See if I can. Oh, that is actually indigo. Bring in the black. Illustrations, I'll go over those just to make them stand out. Might turn out to be a bad idea in the end. <laughs> We're just seeing what we can do at the moment. I'm not entirely sure how long I've been filming because I had to stop when I went down to answer the door. So I'm not sure when I'm going to have to stop or if I'm going to have to stop. I might just make this into a, a speed cover. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Depends how bored people get away. <laughs> <laughs> with my talking because yeah I don't have that much to talk about I'm afraid nothing very interesting goes on in my life living in Cornwall it's a very quiet place not much goes on here just part of its charm life is quiet I go to work I colour in there's not much more to my life That seems to have a red for a base and it seems to be shaded with the dark brown so let's see. Something like that. I'll go over this again with the red. See if we can get some sort of the same effect as goes on over there on the illustration. 
some sort of some sort of effect doesn't have to be the same does it maybe bring in the that might be a hmm okay here we go having no ideas as I go will this will this work I'm bringing in some of the orange on the edge of the red there. Yeah, it's not in the illustration, but I just thought, try it. Let's see. <laughs> it can't hurt, can it? Okay, and then going over with the red. That's a look. <laughs> Entirely sure if that works or not, but maybe I'll try blending it with the white. Ooh. Tempting to bring in the gold sharpie for those little little kind of dots on the drum. I don't know. Shading now a little bit. Let's get back into that with the brown. Okay, let's, let's try doing them inside of this drum. See how that works out. There seems to be a darker, kind of orangey yellow, kind of outline around the edge there. Going into a more kind of creamy colour, so I'll just lightly shape there. And go over lightly with the orange for the outline. Like so, and then bring that a little bit with the white. See what we end up with. That's fairly similar. Looking for an eye end here, we could probably do with a little bit more. Like that. Okay, and maybe in the middle, there's some red. And then shade it a little bit with the dark brown. Oh, sorry, I really do need to buy a new chair. That reminds me, my chair is ever so creaky. Okay, shading in that with the brown. I'm trying a bit more darker pressure with the red. That's pressing pretty hard, and that's the extent of what we can get out of that red, I think. Okay, while well, I'm thinking about it, I'll just do these dots with the, the silver sharpie. I don't want to do the dots on the drum with silver because then that will be like the same as the ones on the frame, and that might look a bit odd. Mm. I really don't know about that. It's a very kind of warm grey and I have no idea how to try and get that with these pencils. I might have to bring in the gold. I'm trying to resist it. Let's... Let's try going in with the yellow. And... Shading those with the orange. I'll have to bring in the dark brown. And give them a bit of a white gel pen. White gel pen reflection. 
Oh no, that seemed to go. Oh well. I'll roll with it. Okay, they have indigo outlines. I suppose I could always change that colour around the drawing. Um, let's add in that frame, that door frame. And how to make this kind of purpley blue, I have no idea. So I'm going to try doing very light pressure with this. What is this one called? With the blue. And going over the top with this deep fuchsia very lightly. I have no idea if I'll give me purple. Let's give me purple. It's a bit light. I think that's more the colour that's on this inside. So let's take the indigo. This piece seems to be darker. The inside is pretty light, so okay, let's try on the lines quite hard. Let's give quite a light layer. Line could be well, line could be the indigo. We'll give that quite a light layer and then try with the purple on top of that. Try with the fuchsia on top of that actually. We're trying to make purple. Not terrible. Not as good as I would have hoped it might be. But yeah, I think with that purple being put in the background there, I make some sort of. Yeah, oh, that's better. Going over with the light blue over the top again. I wonder if the the white could help us out here. There we go, it's bluer than the illustration. I think that the gold should look quite good next to that purple so I know I said I wouldn't but this is the gold sharpie which will probably shadow through onto the illustration on the other side But hopefully it should work well with that kind of purpley colour we've got going on there. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the illustration. Concentrating. <laughs> I've lost the ability to talk. I'm concentrating. There we go. Okay. I think I need to to shade in this red in the middle. Okay. No use. And shade in this gold with a bit of the dark brown. That's how I usually do gold if I'm using the gold sharpie, shade it with a kind of dark brown and then just do a few highlights with a white gel pen. That's my lazy way of doing gold. I do have a couple of colour combinations that I use if I'm going to do gold kind of the hard way and do it all with pencils. I have a couple of combinations. 
but this way is quick and easy so I like to use that too Do the highlights, where's the moon? Half the top, so the highlights would be along here. Here. Okay, yeah, but I think that works quite well. While I've got the gel pen, I'll do the highlights on there. On these rivets so how I did those I colored them with the silver sharpie did a white highlight and then just a little bit of shadow with the black like so. just to give a vague impression of being 3d they're really small and it's not a very realistic picture so I didn't worry too much about being totally realistic Okay, so we've done the drum. How are we going with those buildings there? And the steeple of that church is the dark brown. And I'm just going to keep it really simple. Just flat colouring for these buildings at the bottom. Pretty much. I might have done a little bit of shading over here. Maybe just smoothed it with the white. But I want to keep it totally simple. And there are some little bits of light from the windows in the church. These windows, I think so. That. And the sides of the church are a bit deeper in the light blue, I think. Is that the nearest we're going to get? Behind that window, that's lit up as well. Let's see if we can get some yellow on top of that black. Yeah, that line work being fairly, fairly light, we can do that. And the outlines, I think we'll go for blue. Tiny little bit shape. The roof. Black, Let's see if we can see if we can blend that a little bit better for the steeple. Okay, that's very light. Now I did the windows down there, I coloured coloured yellow over the the actual shading because as I've said that the outlines are very kind of light grey and then I went around the outline of the windows with white hopefully just giving the impression the windows are lit up but not being too super obviously bright because the animals in the middle are what we really want to can concentrate on there we go not too bad no roof of the windmill again the dark brown Bringing a bit of the, the light, the dark terracotta, I keep calling it light terracotta. It's dark. We're just giving a sort of outline of buildings down the bottom here. Um, down here we seem to have the dark blue coming in again. To the grass and here the sky.
Let's say one of the mill looks to be brown. This one is more blue. Let's okay then. Let's put some terracotta. And let's put some blue. Let's see what that turns out like. Most of the window look to be kind of blue. Let's see what that brown and blue looks like. Okay, let's see if I can remember how to do this door frame. The inside we yeah, I remember that. That was just a light layer of the pale blue, which I believe is just called blue. And the wood grain is kind of picked out in a very light kind of pink colour, but I don't think we're going to be doing that. That can be white. <laughs> Side, isn't it just one layer of each? A little bit more blue over the top. Let's see how that works with the white to blend it. That's fine. I think. Maybe a little bit more over the top. Can we do this in pink? There we go. It's not a light pink as it is in the illustration, but it is pink. I'm going to go with it because it's fun. <laughs> It's a pretty sketchy illustration anyways. We're not realistic. This is just a dark brown that I picked up some dark lines with apparently. I thought I picked up the black. It's a dark brown but I'll go with it. Okay, not looking too bad. We have some... yeah, this is actual... Put the dark brown away. Get the black. This is black. In the illustration, this is black. To be in a nice sky with the clouds just coming in. There we go. And we just have the clouds at the bottom. Sure. Gonna be lighter around there, aren't they? Because it's a lighthouse apparently. And this, these bits are yellow. So how are we gonna do that? Let's. Let's make these the blue. Might bring in the white gel pen to do a bit more. Bit of outlines around there. Let's separate those out. And this lighthouse would be shining onto the houses. Yeah, it is an illustration, it's shining onto the houses. So we'll do a little bit of that. And these windows are yellow, it would be shiny, but they have actually been filled in, which is... Oh, it would have been easier if they just left those white and then I could colour them yellow to be lit windows. Myself, as I do. Okay, clouds. Hot blue and light blue. And the 
right, she's going to need a sharpen in a minute. some stars as well, some little yellow kind of circle-y stars down in this bit. I'll pop some in with the white gel pen to give some kind of indication. Seems to be that kind of medium blue we ended up making there. So let's stop bringing that in, taking the indigo over the top of the light blue. So hopefully, make that white. Totally make that into the medium blue. Let's put the light blue there. some stars. I'm going to add some white outlines to these clouds. So I think especially around this lighthouse they would be lighter. Okay and this this looks to be, I have drawn in the kind of the lines of, on the illustration there's some lines of light coming out from the lighter so I've drawn those in with the yellow pencil later on so I'll try and like colour around them and behind the animals we're starting to come behind the donkey here there is uh, there is some sky but it's just a flat colour so I'm going to try and make it into that kind of medium blue that I had going on in the sky over here. I'm thinking this is how I did it. I can never remember. <laughs> Sometimes I do something once and then that's it. I can never remember how to do it. I think I did the dark blue on top of the light blue and then blended it with the white and it would be lighter around that lighthouse anyways. Like, it's looking like we might need to bring in some more of that indigo. Yeah, no, it looks a bit odd without it, so we'll bring in a bit behind the donkey, I think. Uh, 
ourselves into the sky behind the donkey because we want the donkey to stand out. The animals are the the feature of the fairy tale. I think they're supposed to be the feature of the, the picture, so we do want them to stand out. These little wisps of cloud here then. It's up yellow I think by the, by the lighthouse and we might give them the orange outline as we were doing on the stars. them so I'll add a little bit of pink and then that out a bit with the blue because they seem to have yeah a bit of pinky purple to them so that's not too bad there and then this house here is more of a darker blue so we'll go on top of that and make it darker. This one is a lighter blue. And this one has a bit of a light reflecting onto it. That one is the darker brown. And again, we're keeping this towards the front, we're keeping it really quite simple, hoping there's nothing there that will catch the eye too much, because the colours are pretty muted, but when you have the limited, limited amount of pencils, there's not much you can do to make colours too muted, except for not press too hard, try and blend them out a bit with the white. Does have a more darker outline around it. I'm not entirely sure what colour. I'll do it with this indigo. And just sharpen.
Okay, let's sketch that a little bit more. At the end of the it's not too bad. Let's outline the windows. Because, yeah, they really should have been left white, I think. If we were to be doing the, the window light, the lights being on as they are in the illustration, but we'll work with what we've got. It helps putting the white gel pen around it, that makes it look a bit more like the window light as well. And because we are up close to the lighthouse here, I'm going to do a few. The white gel pen that yeah I did say I would try not to do but around that around that lighthouse there does seem to be a lot of obviously light because it's a lighthouse and these buildings do have a little bit of pink to them and then this one has a little bit of pink Probably a bit too much pink. Crazy, crazy, raise. <laughs> and a little bit of the blue. It's kind of bringing in that sort of purpley colour we've got going on there, so maybe that will work. I don't want to overcomplicate the bottom though. We just want that there to be as a kind of as a setting, really, just to give some sort of background or context to the animals so we don't want it catching the eye too much I don't want it looking neglected like I haven't bothered with it too much <laughs> go again lit. So lots of light. I'm going a bit too dark with the background down there now. <laughs> I'm hoping it isn't. I might need to do a little bit of erasing but I'll do the rest of the picture first and then see how everything is evening out. Hopefully it will even out. Here we have a few bushes. On the side of the river at the bottom. Looks like a river. I don't know, is there a river in Bremen? <laughs> Whatever these guys are, there is a river at the bottom according to the illustration, so we'll go with it. We'll give them a river. Okay, I think I used the very light green just so I use every the lime green, just so I use every pencil in the end. I'll bring in the lime green on this side as well, but not very I'm not going to be pressing very heavy because this one is, yeah, super bright. Just for the light on the edges and the bushes there. Okay, and I can't remember how I shaded those now. <laughs> it was only this morning. <laughs> My brain is going like I think I might have shaded them with the brown. And a little bit of the black cross hatching. I think originally I did some white gel pen on them but wasn't happy with it. I don't know. Let's just blend that out, see what we get. I 
something similar to the other side? Yeah. That'll do. It's not too bright that it takes any attention away from the middle, but it does look as if there's something there, like we've paid a bit of attention to our background. Um, let's finish off the windmill. I think I did those with the white terracotta. That's looking alright. I think I need to darken that though. And put some black in there. That's the dark brown. This is the black. Shadow on the rivet. While I'm thinking about it. And the river at the bottom. I think with the indigo close to the edges. Trying to take off my pressure towards the middle so that I can bring in the bring in the light blue. We don't want too much contrast down towards the bottom, but we do want it to look as if we haven't just forgotten about it. Okay, we need to go around those windows. I think we'll be done for the background at the bottom. A little bit of the green colour here when we forgot. I'll probably leave it there because I have no idea how long I've been filming for. It's probably at least a couple of hours there. So I'll leave it there for the first part. And there we go. Next time we'll be, we'll be moving on to do finish off the rest of the clouds in the background and doing the main animals on the window frame in the middle. Okay, so thank you for watching everybody. Take care and I'll see you in future videos. Bye.